Um, speaking of game line, this is a perfect segue. So retro video game prices uh, have actually been on a decline. Like we did mention earlier, they're, they're still high, but they are going down. Do you think the prices will continue to decline overall, or do you see potential for them to spike again in the future? I would imagine, I don't know, there's so many factors. I've talked to a lot of people about this, and people always bring up a lot of good points. Of course, there is the whole graded game fiasco, uh, which shot up prices. That's a whole thing that I'm sure a lot of people know about. We don't need to necessarily get into. There's that. There is the pandemic, of course, which I always argued that it's like people are at home. They're thinking about people dying and they just got a $2,000 check from the government. What's better than splurging on a little nostalgia? So I think that did it. You also have the advent of people, unfortunately, like me, who are preaching about retro games and how fun it is to collect. And so there's that whole YouTuber people that are are spreading the word. And so that's going to drive up demand as well. And then it's just also that as these things get older, people want to reclaim them and, and, and get them. So I do think that with the current financial state of, of the country and the world that we will see the prices go down somewhat, but it's never going back like to what it was. I think that it's just, I mean, video games in general right now are more popular than ever. So it would make sense mm-hmm. that they're becoming a more significant part of our history and, and more important collector's items. So I'm, I'm curious how much we'll see it go down, but I, I don't really think it's going to be that much unless something really crazy happens. But I don't know. What do you guys think? We recently did a, a video talking about this very thing. Um, I think that now that the world is going back to normal, prices are going to start to decline and continue to drop slightly but i don't think we'll ever see prices like they used to be you know five six years ago i think that's over and done um COVID introduced a lot more people to collecting uh not just video games but anything um so it you know I, I, but i do think the bubble burst and there's still some people that like actually enjoy it now you know they're not in it to just flip a buck um and they actually you know enjoy and introducing their their children into video games and you know passing the you know the torch which is great i i love it and i love those type of people to come into the store because i love talking to them but i yeah i think prices are are gonna continue to drop slowly which is good for me because then i spend more <laughs> mm, perfect yeah, well that's true there's more available at a decent price you're definitely going to be more likely to pick stuff up i think that uh I want to touch on something that Dustin, he didn't want to go down this rabbit hole. I'm going to just poke my head in and pull it right back out because <laughs> it's, it's going to be a long, long conversation. So I'm just going to go right in and go right out. The whole col- collecting the, the sealed games and putting them in, you know, encasing them in their tombs and reselling them, that market is going to die. There, there is not enough sustainable mm-hmm. people that really believe that Mario 64 with, with a 9.8 grade that sold for over a million dollars, that is not going to continue. I don't think we're ever going to see stuff like that again because it's just madness. That is the most common game on the N64. Not second, not third, the most. There's million. I'm sure there's tons of those sitting in people's garages right now or like hidden away somewhere. There's no way that game's worth a million dollars. So that, with that being said, that market's done or it's, it's dying slowly. The other part is the, the regular people like us, like the collectors who want to have stuff. That market is going to, uh, it it is in the decline also. I think it's going to taper off. I think it's going to be higher than uh, before we started the pandemic, Mm -hmm. but not as high as peak pandemic, obviously. And the reason I think that, to to Wes's point, it did introduce a lot of people to collecting and stuff like that. Uh, But these are finite objects. And the more collectors that there are, the less copies there are for people in general. And I think specifically, like the common stuff, is going to have more of a, a decline, but anything that's rare is going to continue to probably mm. go uh, back up if it went down. And if it's an uh, uncommon game that's sought after, that's going to continue to go up. Uh, an example for that, Wes and I talked before the show, uh, Spider-Man Shattered Dimension of the PS3 is an $80 game. That's probably a pretty common game, common to maybe uncommon. And 
that's at 80 bucks right now, which is crazy. Like that's, that shouldn't, shouldn't necessarily be there, but it's, you know, people want that IP. They're going to look for that specific item. Now, if it was like a normal sports year and it was like, you know, nothing special, Mm -hmm. it was like Madden 2014, you're going to see those all over the place still. Just, it just depends Mm -hmm. on the title, but right. That's my two cents. Bro, it's crazy. And like you said, we were talking about Shattered Dimensions because uh, I'm Matt, I'm Matt's supplier, if you didn't know, Dustin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always it's like, Matt, it's like, we just got this game traded in. Do you need it? You know, what are you looking for? We just got this collection of games in. But it's Shattered Dimension and Web of, Web of Shadows are like the two expensive Spider-Man games on any platform. And I don't really know why. <laughs> uh. I can partially answer that question. They are not listed to download. You cannot easily get them. You have to have a physical copy because those licenses were not renewed. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Activision had the Spider-Man license at the time, and now mm-hmm. Sony does. Yeah, 75 bucks on PlayStation 3. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I said, and Web of Shadows was... Yeah, I think it's Web of Shadows was the other one. That was like... That's super expensive. I mean, yeah. not crazy expensive, but it, it's it's higher than the average you know, PlayStation 3 game. Yeah. Dustin, I'm not trying to force you to do anything you don't want to do, but if you start collecting for PS3 and PS4 now, this is the time to do it, sir. Get in there while yeah. this stuff is cheap. It's already starting to go up somewhat on PS3. Yeah, I I believe it. I That's one of those things where I'm not necessarily, I'm not going crazy out of my way, but this is one of those things where if I see common games and stuff like that, I'm definitely buying it. It's crazy how it's already like sneaking up. And I mean, like Wii U now, I'm sure, which was already going up before the game, before the eShop shut down. I'm sure that now it's even worse. Yeah, Wii U is going up. 3DS is going up. Uh, like to your point that those shops shut down, that's definitely another factor. Um, even original DS is, is definitely mm-hmm. on the rise. I think for some reason, I think the 3DS games just. I, DS was like I think the most popular handheld of all time, like the, the the DS family of consoles. But 3DS was not nearly as popular as those DS games, which is probably keeping the DS games cheaper, just from you know you're just being more in the supply chain. And uh, but I think the 3DS games and the Wii U games are definitely going up in price. Oh, without a doubt, I I just picked up Shinobi for the 3DS. I mean, it was still sealed, um, and it cost me like eighty bucks. Dead or Alive for the 3DS is like cost me like sixty bucks. Dang. Like, oh my god! I can't believe that. It's not even that old. I was, yet. I was happy to find Shinobi though. I, I, everybody kept saying how great that game was. The next section we're going to get into is modern collecting, but we'll talk about that in a minute. I, I have one other question for Dustin. Uh, sure. Is there? You may not like the term, but is there like a hidden gem or something that's that's since you're into PS1 that you could recommend on PS1 that's a really good game that not that many people are aware of or a little bit less? Um, OK, I'll have a, a, a serious answer and a joke answer. But the joke is, I don't know. So my joke answer is Tomba, but I don't necessarily think it's a great game. I just particularly love both Tomba 1 and 2. I feel like they're really unique in their gameplay style and that they're these 2d like adventure games. Uh, and I think the characters in it are really fun. And it's just like this weird, like character driven mascot type game that t- died and disappeared. It's like this, I don't know, weird game. I, I grew up loving that game. From the shores of Maine to the California coast, Tomba has captured the hearts of Americans everywhere. Maybe it's the way he swings and climbs, or defeats the evil pigs and man eating plants. Or maybe it's the way you and Tomba conquer them all. Together, Tomba loves you. And by golly, America loves Tomba. The one, I don't know if this really counts as a hidden gem, but, and I mentioned it earlier, but the first Suikoden game, the second mm-hmm. one is the one that gets all the love. Everyone talks about Suikoden 2 and. Uh, I haven't fully, I haven't beaten Suikin in two, but I played through all the first one. I'm like, dude, this is sick. This is awesome. And I mean, maybe it's just that the second one is that good that it totally outshines it, but don't sleep on the first one, especially they got those remasters coming out uh, later this year, but don't, I would say do not skip the first one. Cause it's also very good. Now hmm. they didn't, I, I'm sorry. I, I know this is kind of slightly off of your su- subject. 
did they say that Suikoden is going to have uh, a physical copy for the remake, or did they have not announced any of those yet? I unannounced, I think, currently. So we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, some of those companies are driving me crazy with that. Like when they they remastered, um, oh god, what was that PS One game? It's like pretty expensive. It's like a platform mm-hmm. Klonoa. They just Klonoa. released Klonoa, mm-hmm. and there was no physical copy. I think they did in Japan, but not in the U.S. Oh yeah. What about you, Matt? I don't know. I played some weird games for PS One. I'm just trying to think of something that would like stand out. I. I I feel like this is a bad answer because it might be like too popular. Um, but it, I will, I will, instead of it being a hidden gem, I'm going to say it's probably a forgotten game, but driver was awesome on PS1. Dude. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Okay. So I, I know that it was popular at the time, but I don't think anybody ever talks about driver at all anymore. So <laughs> what about you, Wes? Hmm. I would say, actually there's two. I, I would say disruptor. For the PlayStation One, it was a first-person shooter. It was it. It was okay. It was good. It was better than a lot of people expected, and it didn't get the love it sh- it deserved. It was put out by Universal. You know, it had you know it was movie quality production at the time. Um, and Intelligent Cube. Onomatopoeia. O-N-O-M-A-T-O-P-O-E-I-A. Think you're really smart? Then try Intelligent Cube, the painfully tough new brain twister. Get ready to think or die. That was a <clears throat> that was a Sony published game. Yeah, I love yeah. Intelligent Cube. Yeah, I never played it. It looked it looked interesting. For modern games, th- this is an interesting question. Are you getting your modern games online? Or are you buying them in stores? And if you're buying them in stores or online, where do you prefer to go? It really depends. It's actually changing recently these last few months just because I'm finding that local stores are getting dicey for new games. In particular, uh, I really wanted the Hogwarts Legacy Special Edition. Did not pre-order it. When it came out, could not find it in stock anywhere and Mm -hmm. i'm seeing this more and more now of people that if you do not go and get a new release game at on release day if you're not there if you go to like target or whatever that they're not they just don't have copies i was at target earlier this evening and there was i i'm pretty sure i i wasn't looking for it but i was like i don't think they had resident evil 4 in stock for ps5 i was like dude i'm and surely they'll get more but I'm finding that retail has been really hit and miss, at least in my area, maybe in a more populated city. That's not as bad. So I have been doing a lot of online in particular Best Buy has been doing free steel books, which I'm not a big steel book collector, mm-hmm. but if you're going to give me something extra for free, I'm, I'll take it. So like I have final fantasy 16 pre-ordered there. So, uh, but yeah, I, I do still like, Uh, particularly like new release Fridays. Like I'll get up, I get sacred ready to post on Fridays and then I'll, I'll drive out, go to target. Maybe I'll pick up breakfast. It's like a nice little event when a new game comes out, but it just sucks that I I guess I, in theory should be pre-ordering something if I want it, but I also don't really want to do that also. So I don't know. It's hit and miss. And even if you pre-order, you're not guaranteed to get it. I, Mm -hmm. I I went to a GameStop because uh, a friend of ours still is the one manager left that we know that runs a GameStop. So I'll give him, I'll support him and give him the business. And uh, I pre-ordered Gungrave, which is based off an anime. Never got it. Because <laughs> he, he would say, he's like, look, if you want it, they're not sending us any extras, no wall copies. If you want it, you got to pre-order it. I pre-ordered it. And he's like, yeah, I don't know what happened. They just didn't send it. <laughs> So unless it's like a, and it was like, it's, it wasn't a popular game, but unless it's like a, a one top tier title, like resident evil or call of duty, you know, you'll get that. But outside of that, it's hard. So are you primarily going physically to that game? Stop the period of your new releases. Is that mostly what you're doing? Yes. Cool. Yes. Yeah. I'll go there to give him the business. 
you know, if, unless there's something he like he doesn't get or is not getting for some reason, I'll venture out to other avenues. But yeah, I'll I'll do a bit of both. I will buy stuff online or in stores. Uh, if I'm getting it online, I usually don't get new releases from Amazon. I'll usually buy older stuff on Amazon that's been sitting there for a while. It's on discount. New releases I'll usually get from Best Buy or GameStop. I'll sometimes order them online and do like a pre-order to pick it up in the store. To Dustin's point, it has been harder to find stuff in the store. Mm -hmm. So even if I don't mind pre-ordering stuff just because I usually get something for free. I know some people are totally against that because you don't want to like show like, oh, I'm going to support your game no matter what. But I'm usually very particular. Like I think I have two things on pre-order right now. And, you know, to Wes's point, you pre stuff at GameStop and it's not coming in all the time. It's like, what's, what are you guys doing? Like, this is what you do. Wes yeah. and I both <laughs> used to work there. I know that this is what you mm-hmm. used to do. Like, this is what your business is around. <laughs> uh, so I, I do still go there a little bit, but I'm very, like, if it's something I really want, I'm going to probably get it at Best Buy just because I'm more confident that they'll actually get the item in the store. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing is just that the, about the pre-ordering stuff is that, I always tell people, it's like, if it's something I really want and I want to make sure I have it on launch day, then I will pre-order it. But you can always cancel a pre-order and you can always return it if it's bad. I I returned my pre-order of Mass Effect Andromeda when that came out. I was like, (laughs) I don't, I, I can't play this right now. Maybe later. Focus defenses here and here. The cat have been quiet for too long. See? No reason we can't be civilized. And then I never ended up playing it. It sounds like I was better off for not. So you can always take it back. Yeah, I don't think you missed too much there with Andromeda. <laughs> I heard they did patch it and stuff, but I mean, to go back now, eh, 